Hey, Chris. Hey, Tammy. Got three o'clock. Hi, Cammy. Hi. Can you hear me? So, hi to Bertha and Cheryl and Mike. And the Jim Tammy. Hey. There she is. I thought you were going to be the uh, silent, invisible type today. <laughs> like Cheryl apparently is. Not in my DNA. Good to see you again, Bertha. Good to see you too. Twice in one day. Yeah. Same here with Mike and Virginia. <laughs> I can't get enough of my trusted advisors network. <laughs> As it should be. Good to see you, Kim. Thanks. Welcome, Patrice. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. Welcome, Gary. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, Tammy. So I'm going to give it another 30 seconds and then we'll get rolling. Alrighty, so thank you for joining this afternoon. This learning lab this afternoon is to revisit the changes for the new leadership process. Um, I'll walk you through it. I'm going to screen share an outline for a couple of minutes and then we'll, I'll get rid of that so we don't have to look at that. We can talk with each other. Um, if some of you, some of you were at Power Summit, so some of this may be a refresher and maybe that was your intention to join us today to revisit it. I know some of you that are on this call got the new leadership process already. So that's our objective. And uh, obviously, you know, have a discussion or questions or thoughts from you guys as we go through it. Hey, Arnie. Hi. So I'm going to screen share. This is an outline that is up on the affiliate website. Uh, we're just to keep it simple and separate we're referring to the new leadership is as leadership 2.0 just so that because literally there are people that are using the original leadership as well um, so this is what was unveiled in the last week of power uh, last week of october at power summit um, so that i'm going to walk through you know the major changes and show you some of the differences but again, if you want this outline, it is on the affiliate website under the leadership process. One of the big things overall that we did is we really streamlined it um, and condensed some things. Uh, so it is 10 chapters now as opposed to 12. And I'll show you where we pick that up. The first place where we pick that up is the first new chapter entitled Your Leadership Journey. In this particular chapter, we combined the good essence of both the original uh, you possess the ability to lead 
or preparation for leadership and you possess the ability to lead. So those two chapters got condensed and it's now referred to as one chapter, the Le Your Leadership Journey. We changed some of the titles. Leadership success is a bit different, but leadership success is where we talk about the three types of leaders. You know, the uh, diminisher, the neutralizer, the enhancer. This is where we discuss the difference between authority and power. This is where the secret to success story is in this chapter as well. So not a lot changed there, uh, but updated and updated in examples. One of the other things that we did throughout this entire process is we are going and we've made the commitment in this rewrite and future rewrites that we're getting away with the whole concept of gender and going gender neutral. So we've eliminated the pronouns his and her and we have gone to a they, them, so that we can be more respectful of different identities and, and different things that people, um, or different ways people position what they believe in. We also brought in a lot of examples as it relates to how people are dealing with different crises. So we refer to 9-11, we obviously refer to the pandemic, making it really very real and very, very current. Yes, you did, you told me to. Okay, shoot. I was going to pin that mirror on it. Tammy, can I stop and ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody pop in at any time? Yeah. Um, assuming eight or ten months from now, hopefully, the pandemic will be in the past, as 9 11 is obviously in the past 20 years ago, so that you deal with 20, 9 11 in a different way than you would have dealt with it if you're writing about it two weeks after it happened. Right. So, so that do you see? Because no longer, I have a printed copy, so that may not be easy to change, but everything else is digital. So do you see that you could actually rethink out how you deal, I'm just using that as an example, how you would deal with the pandemic in May or June, and then even a year later, how you might do it, would you change it on the fly, so to speak? Um, we have the ability to change it on the fly, but we were very conscious of that concept when we were writing it. And I think we've done a good job and I would be open to anybody else's opinions if you feel differently. I think it's written in such a fashion that whether we were experiencing the pandemic as we were experiencing or talking about it a year later, I think it's written in such a way that might keep it a bit timeless. But as you go through your materials and if you have a differing opinion, I would love to hear it. So, well, you were answering my question that if we do have a differing opinion. It's more than just one person, but a number of people that, hey, we ought to deal with that. You do not have to wait till we redo leadership to change something. No, we don't have to wait. That, that's, um, that's wonderful. We are not nearly as uh, bogged locked down. In. Locked in. Locked yeah, in. we are much more, as trusted advisors, we are much more flexible that we can make changes much more quickly. Great, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. So many of you are aware that our commitment in um, end of 19 and 2020 was to create two new chapters that dealt with emotional intelligence and diversity. So those chapters were standalones for a period of time as they were created and made available for you to be able to add to any of the processes, and they still are. Um, kind of pulling off of Arnie's point, because we are uh, creating materials in a much more flexible way, um, a much more just-in-time process. Literally, even if it's hard copy, you can, any of the chapters, um, you can add to an existing process. So power of uh, emotional intelligence and diversity, they were created as standalones, but we knew going into leadership that they were going to become part of the core. And they sit in position chapter three and sit in position chapter four. And it is what it is. You know, we talk about the power of emotional intelligence and we really get into it. There is a case study that comes from an organization that has, um, it's a trucking organization that has operations in the United States and Canada. The difference between emotions and feelings, and you can see there, I don't have to read it to you, but you can see it. And then obviously we get into diversity and inclusion. 
for some of you, this is new information. For some of you, this is a refresher. But some, some of you don't know is that when we're working on the diversity, we had the opportunity through a couple of affiliates to share the diversity inclusion chapter with individuals who really had an important viewpoint. Doug Brown was uh, very instrumental in getting, a, getting the chapter in the hands of a Hispanic gay gentleman and a woman well, I shouldn't use woman, a individual that considers herself non-binary. Um, and all of those pronouns that I just said are totally wrong and inappropriate. But a non-binary individual took a look at it and they were both really thrilled with the chapter. And so, in fact, um, they both came back and said, wish our organization had something and implemented something like this. And they both work in two very different organizations. Another, as the social unrest became pretty intense, beginning of this year, one of our other affiliates shared this chapter with four African American gentlemen that happened to be part of a client that he was working with to get their viewpoint. Um, and so far, everyone that's looked at it has said, you know, we're dealing with it in a very appropriate way. Um, and that pretty much found the chapter to be spot on. So again, this could be added to any of the other processes, but this is now the outline of the new leadership core. <clears throat> One of the other ways we kind of streamlined it, if you're familiar with the old leadership, goal setting falls over two chapters. It was goal setting for success and turning solutions into actions. Goal setting is now one chapter. It made it a little longer, but what we're suggesting in the facilitation, if you use the facilitation manual as we describe it, goal setting, achieving goals for success is a one chapter facilitation week. Let's give the participants, the, the logic here was, let's give the participants all the pieces of the goal setting model in one learning opportunity and then facilitate how to use that and how to grow from it. So what you were familiar with as goal setting for success and turning solutions into action is now combined. As you might imagine, the, the components of goal setting haven't changed. Obviously we updated it with examples, but the core of goal setting is still the core of goal setting. Didn't make a lot of changes in un understanding and affirming you. Again, pretty sound tenets. One of the things that we did talk about is we changed it to the actual ego states. Now let's call them what they are and talk about them in that way. And we've added some additional examples of how someone may act or behave when they're in adult, parent, or child. One of the other things that we were asked for is put some questions in as far as communication, as far as being able to communicate more effectively and clarify. Uh, so there's two major changes in the communications chapter, and one I'll give the guy credit because he's on the call, is listen aggressively. It's something that uh, Rick Colster suggested, and we added that. Uh, the author of the book, I don't recall, but it's in the actual chapter. And one of the things we also did, yay, go coach Rick. One of the things we also did was put in some facilitated questions. If you're looking to communicate more effectively and you wanna clarify, you know, clarify the situation, here are some open-ended questions that you as a participant can use to help get to the crux of the matter. Because communication is about message delivered, but also importantly, message received. So how can I confirm that? So those are two major additions to the communications chapter. Another chapter that got a major overhaul is managing your time. Um, I was introduced to the book by Doug Brown for a totally different reason, um, but there's a book called Work Clean. And basically, um, I can get it for you. It's basically called Work Clean, and its author is Dan Sharnas, C-H-A-R-N-A-S. And it's basically taking the concept of mise en place, which is French for Work Clean, that allows chefs to be so, really, really good chefs, to be so efficient in their kitchen, to be able to pump out hundreds and hundreds of dinners in a serving. And the whole concept is you have to work clean. 
The book is broken down into three sections. It's kind of like a cookbook, if you will. The first two sections is really where the meat of the information is. The third part is kind of like a mini action plan to use our words. But Doug suggested I read it and I did, and it, things happened for a reason because I was working on the leadership process at the same time. And Charnas gives a lot of really great examples that modernize the time management process. You know, and some really great examples as it relates to if you're gonna work clean, for example, there should be a part of your day, the end of every day, where literally you are going through your email and throwing out everything is no longer needed. Um, going through all of your, you know, many pieces of paper and filing everything in the appropriate spot. You know, getting your stuff ready if you're working from home or if you're going to the office. There's a lot of really neat tidbits that allows you to, again, work clean. So we stole a lot of that. Obviously, we gave them all the right attribution, uh, but some, some good refreshers on the whole time management concept. <clears throat> and then making decisions and solving issues. One of the disclaimers that we put in there as part of this chapter is that we're, re we're referring to everything as an issue. So it has a neutral theme. It's not a problem because it could be a problem. It could be a challenge. It could be an issue. So we talk about issues in this particular chapter. So making decisions and solving issues. Problem always has a negative connotation for a lot of folks. So does challenge. And not every decision has a bad connection to it. You know, there are good decisions. So we just neutralized it and made everything that we talk about as far as making decisions and solving issues. And then the last major change is we added part of the very last chapter, which is courage, and put that in together with motivation, and that's where we end. We talk a lot about motivation, understanding human needs, which is where Maslow is, it's still there. Common methods of motivation, you know, the, the fear, the incentive, and then goal-oriented motivation motivation killers, handling frustration. And what we, we end the process on the whole concept of the courage to stay the course. That leadership is an ongoing process, that developing leadership is an ongoing process. You don't go through this leadership process and then voila, magic wand, you are a phenomenal leader. You guys all know by being in this business, it's a evolutionary process. And that's how we end the chapter of motivation and courage is, you know, what, what are you going to do next to continue to build your leadership ability and strengthen your leadership muscles? So based upon combining the first two chapters, moving courage into motivation and letting goal setting be a one chapter in totality, we have a complete process that's 10 chapters long. And if you look at the facilitation manual, one of the major differences in goal setting is that we're going to do one chapter in that session and it's just goal setting only. So those are the changes that got made to the text. Because of the whole commitment to the diversity and inclusion conversation, we made some minor changes in the action plan. And they are minor, but in the social life wheel, the family life wheel, and the ethics and belief life wheel, there are an added maybe two, three at most questions that deal with the attitude of diversity and inclusion. The, the questions in each of those three are unique to each section, so they're not redundant, but they are reinforcing the thought process of how do you interact, what are your attitudes about the whole conversation of diversity and inclusion. So it's sprinkled in there, it's subtle. It's not like we took out a whole section, diversity and inclusion. We didn't think it needed to go quite that far, but it's not very often when we do a rewrite that we make changes to the action plan, and this time we did. One of the things that we talked about during Power Summit in the last week of October is how this impacts the two coaching chapters. And I said more to come and it'll be done right around the corner. There was also some streamlining there and literally the, coach, the new coaching a version of this will be ready by the end of this week. It'll go out in our message on Wednesday. 
Well, if you use that before, the first two chapters of leadership got replaced with two coaching chapters, right? The coaching relationship, and then it went into the second chapter. We took a look at it and really thought that defining the coaching relationship was still really important. But by blending it into the second chapter, it just got, it went from really good in our opinion to kind of fluff. So we streamlined it. We've added about a page and a half to the first chapter, your leadership journey, that talks about the coaching relationship, what you can expect, you know, what's different about the coaching, what the relationship's gonna look like. Again, good tenants didn't really change a lot of the messaging. We shortened it, and one major difference that we did is we talked about the coaching relationship for the first page and a half, and basically we ended it by saying, now let's get started. And literally that's the closing line of that section. So that it goes right into your leadership journey. So it looks like it belongs there. It flows, I think, really, really nicely while still identifying and communicating with your participant of what this coaching relationship is gonna look like. So literally now, instead of if you order a coaching chapter, you're literally gonna see one tab that's different and that's gonna be the first one. And really the tab is not gonna be different. Well, I, I, I digress. The title of the tab will be the same, your leadership journey. The body of the tab will have another bullet item in the first position that says the coaching relationship. And then the rest of the tab will follow the same as the leadership journey chapter. So I think we really kept the essence of what was meant to be there to explain that relationship but I think we cleaned it up a little bit and there's a very, I think, distinct point of saying, okay, now you need to know what you need to know about the coaching relationship, but now let's just get on with it. And the line is, so let's get started. So that's going to audio, audio production this week. Um, so literally probably within the next two weeks, those things will be accessible, but it's officially done and on its way to audio and the tabs are getting produced and you'll see in our message on Wednesday that we'll be communicating that. Um, and that'll be available LMS as well. Nothing will change there. So you've got access to it, hard copy. I know some of you on this call already got your discounted copy from Power Summit. LMS will be there as well. Um, those are the major changes that we made and uh, we are in the process strategically of determining what projects we're gonna attack for 2021. We're just about there as far as making some final decisions. Um, and if you don't have it on your calendar, the town hall on December 9th from three to four is where we're going to strategically commit to what we're gonna be doing in 2021. But some fun, fun things ahead. So with that, we're gonna open it up to questions or thoughts. Tammy, this is quick. Uh, you referenced a book on aggressive listening, but you didn't tell us the title because you said it was in a chapter and scanning it, I'm not finding it. Hey Rick, if you can hear me, can you share the name of the book that aggressive listening comes out of? You're muted. Excuse me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it comes from a book, book called It's Your Ship by M Captain Michael Abershaw. Hang on, I'll show it to you. I got it. Thank you. If you can see it, there it is. It's kind of a crappy, it doesn't show very well on virtual backgrounds, now, does it? Hang on a second. Uh, and booger face. Have you read that book, Mike? Yes, I have. Okay. So then you're familiar with it. Yeah. It's a good book also. Thank you, Rick, for covering my butt because my, my copy's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, I've got a hard copy in front of me and I was just looking through the action plan. Did you, and you said you made some changes in social and, and family. Uh, what I'm looking at, I think, is the addition of one question. Is that a true statement? In some cases it might be, yeah. It, we did not pepper a lot in. Okay. In some cases it's two. I think one might be three. Oh, all right. Okay, thank you. 
Tammy, that was my question. I think you said there were three sections in, in um, the action plan. Yeah, so social, so. family, and ethics. And and what was the last one? Sorry. Ethics and beliefs. So it's social, ethics. okay, family, Thanks. and ethics and beliefs. Yep. yep, that's the one I missed earlier. Thanks. For those of you who have gone through it in detail from Power Summit, any thoughts, suggestions? So question on coaching, Tammy. Yes, please. Maybe this is a misimpression, but I thought you could add the coaching first two chapters to any of the processes. Maybe not strategy, but you know, sales and all of the leadership you, processes. You can and the, the the tabbing and you can the answer is yes and people have the tabbing however it, it fits beautifully with leadership if you wanted to dump it into management we could give you those two chapters but you, you would have the rest of the management process okay and we have some affiliates that do that because they don't care that the tabs are not perfect Having non-perfect tabs make it looks more makes it look more custom too. It does. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and to your point, Mike, you could take the new the leadership. It'll be coaching your coaching journey, which will be the one you could put that into management, same way you did the other two of the past. And that's another, I think, a really good point because we just did one today. You know, the, the existing, I shouldn't say old, the existing leadership is not going away. To Arnie's point about the way we're able to produce now, literally we shipped uh, an executive leadership and an existing leadership to a gentleman just today. I'm not sure why he wanted the existing version. When he talked to him, I did not, but that's what he wanted. So, you know, if there's a situation where you have a client where they're doing multiple levels of leadership and you want to keep it consistent because there's nothing wrong with the existing leadership. It's good stuff. You know, we just updated it and modernized it. Um, so it's not like, you know, if you don't, if you need a existing leadership, you have to make that decision by December 31st and I'm making this up to make my point. It's, it's really not going away because we are producing in a much more technological perspective. Um, so You've got some choices. I don't know if that makes it more interesting, more complicated, but sometimes choices are good. Tammy, just to, just to clarify for my muddle brain today, um, the coaching chapter is now a, uh, incorporated into the leadership journey in the leadership process. And we're changing the title of that. There will be a unique tab. Instead of oh. the leadership journey, it'll say your coaching journey. Ah. Okay, so it's going to have that information plus what's already here. Correct. Okay, so in any other process, it exists as a separate chapter. Correct. Okay. Okay. And as we looked at it, if you, to Mike and your point, let's say you both ordered management tomorrow and you wanted, you know, the, the coaching, the new coaching chapter in there, with what we talk about in the coaching journey, I think it fits with every process. So I don't, I don't think it's going to feel like, oh, they just stuck this in here. I, I think it flows really well. And we were very conscious about that when we created your coaching journey so that to my specific point, if I wanted to put it in team leadership, my tabs won't match, but the flow of the content makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Tammy, I have a question. Please. Um, have you done, has trusted advisors done anything to enhance some of the marketing elements of the the process meaning there, there was always that one page rather vanilla marketing piece um and i've never seen anything more than that and in the past i would be the marketing piece i mean i would go talk to somebody and if, if i had the material i have the material but it wasn't important and that one page that you showed at the beginning which we may have had that in the, we, we had that or i made it for yeah. myself um that i, I have one particular client that talked about needing to train um, the future leaders of his company. And he and I have only, and with the group, I've always worked planning. And he wasn't thinking of me as leadership. 
And in normal times, I'd have said, hey, what are you doing next Tuesday morning? I'll come up and I'll sit with you and I, we'll go over it. And now I, I certainly can do that on Zoom. But if there were some other ancillary marketing pieces that, might, that were professionally done by the crack TA group, um, but rather than just what comes out of me. Okay. Long prelude to ask the question, is there new marketing pieces? Well, technically, no. We have updated the individual program piece and you have the new outline. Um, we've always kept the individual program piece sort of general so that you could customize it with your logo and information. If you're looking for a fancier brochure, for lack of a better word, we can certainly you know, I, I might suggest that. I mean, okay. you know, in this time of, because that one, if I remember, was one color, was really not in color. You know, it, was no, it, it actually is color. It's, it's blue and white. But. It was blue and white, <laughs> right. But, but it, 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 with the crack team, it could be somewhat glossier. You know, it, it could, yeah. that, that's, that's really what I'm asking, is I, I think that that's another thing where we want to catch up a little bit. I'll put it on the list for the team meeting tomorrow. I'm sure that... Uh, Jenna could put something together that looks pretty awesome. That could be something that you could PDF and email. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm asking for. Yeah. That should be a fairly easy fix. So Tammy, I think you, you said this, um, the IPP has been updated. It has. There is okay. on the affiliate website, Again, you'll see the existing leadership information is still there, and you'll see another section that'll say Leadership 2.0. So if you okay. want to use the existing leadership IPP, it still exists, but there's a new one for this new process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Other thoughts or questions? Well, a thought or... Um expression of gratitude, whatever, the, in the motivation chapter, and probably because I, th I think it was my suggestion, but um, you've included the, from the Daniel Pink book, Drive, uh, where they talk about, where, where we talk about motivation by attitude. Um, he has three components of intrinsic motivation, which have been rolled into that section of motivation by attitude, which I think is a nice enhancement, thought I'd mention. Thank you, and thank you for the idea, because it was, in fact, Tom's. Now, we got a lot of really great input on this particular process. Um, we fed it out to you guys in some very different ways, technologically, that we would have not done based upon the pandemic. So one, one we learned a lot about how to be able to get you guys, you know, the, the process to give us feedback. Um, the, um, the, the amount of feedback is the most we've ever gotten. And quite frankly, to be honest with you, it kind of made my head explode because that's the corner of, this falls into the corner of my eyes, which is okay. But so it took more time to get through it, but I think the exercise was well worth it. Um, and because of the format in which we shared it with you, I don't, whatever electronic creation Jenna created, um, we got feedback from folks that we normally don't get feedback because what we've always done in the past is we unveiled it at you know a power summit and although we always have a different audience from time to time there is a core that comes to power summit pretty faithfully um, so we got some feedback from folks that we don't normally get feedback from which i thought was a really cool and refreshing exercise because we've got some pretty smart people in this network so thank you for your feedback we'll we use crowdsourcing we call that crowdsourcing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, crowdsourcing that made Tammy's head go poof. But it was good stuff. It was well worth the exercise. And even next year, if we are able to come together face to face in Power Summit, I think we'll still use a similar format that we used this time because that way we don't miss somebody that wants to contribute that can't make it to Power Summit in person. So. I was probably confident that we wouldn't use the full hour today because it's really going over the, the new outline, but I certainly don't want to cut us short if, in fact, there's other questions or, or points of discussion. 
Hi, Tammy. It's Nancy. I have a question. Oh, okay. Um, and and it kind of fits with uh, with this, but I'm not sure. Uh, you said that uh, you got a lot of really good feedback from people outside the network about, especially including those topics on emotional intelligence and diversity and inclusion. So my question is, how do we get together and have a brainstorming session on how to market this valuable tool to the outside world? I, I scan the Baltimore Business Journal at least once a week in positions and I've been looking at inclusion and more and more companies are hiring people who are directors of in diversity and inclusion. So how do we get a message to them? What should be our message? Can we, rather than me trying to do it on my own, is there a way for us to get together and talk it through? Sure. Um, and we, we can use some of the time that we have left, but one of the things that our commitment, one of the commitments that, new commitments that we made based upon some conversations at the Power Summit is we're not going to stop the learning labs because they're really good format for information exchange. But we are adding another format and we're going to call it an open forum to keep the two separate because I think we had some confusion during Power Summit. Um, so we've got our first open forum on Wednesday where we're going to brainstorm how to leverage each other in social networking. So there's my commercial and hopefully you have that on your calendar. But to Nancy's point, we can talk about it here, but we could also create another open forum with that being the entire agenda. So if somebody wants to piggyback on Nancy's thought now, I'll make a note uh, to get it on the calendar as an open forum so it can go beyond um, the 16 folks who are on this call. And, and, and actually, Tammy, I, I guess part of, I won't say it's a concern, it's a, it's a topic that I was fortunate enough to have a discussion with my coaching practicum with. It was Tom um, and Steve Terazaki and Sandy Mitchell, and then Coach Rick and I had our own conversation. Um, I have concern, I guess isn't the right word, but that's where I'm coming from, about moving forward. When we talk about inclusion, that's to make sure everybody's voice is heard. But I have great concerns about what happens when we bring together people who are such diverse political views right now, how we work around that, how we include them in a conversation. And I think what came out of the discussions I have is finding a way to focus on commonly held values and going from there. Anybody have any additional thoughts for Nancy? I mean, it's an oversimplified idea because mm -hmm. sometimes you would you are with people that you don't share values, mm -hmm. and it could be as a facilitation uh, ground rule mm -hmm. that that conversation is not you know like the ground rule that sometimes you use. What said here stays here. You know, maybe one of the ground rules is we respect everybody has diverse views in a polarized time, and that conversation stays out of this room. And I think just those points are important points to bring forward because I know even in the network, we have people on polar opposites Absolutely. regarding the current political spectrum to the point that oftentimes I was afraid to even say what I thought because of the pushback I know I would get from people in the network. So I took a leap of faith during our coaching practicum and put it out there. And I think after we kind of got through it, we had a really, really valuable discussion around it. It can be I think that's the value of the diversity in our network. Mm -hmm. Now I know I value that, so it doesn't matter if it's a polar opposite, what can I learn from it? What's the intention that I'm bringing to the conversation? And that usually is what sets the tone and as, as all of us as leaders, we're the ones that can de-escalate something based on a response or what else we can say. So it doesn't trigger it to escalate, but to de-escalate mm -hmm. it and to really bring out what's the intention in the conversation. So I think that would I be a great opportunity, Nancy. Yeah, I think absolutely. So circling back, does anyone have any idea of, of marketing, how we can 
how we can focus on the fact that we bring value with discussions around inclusion and diversity and put it in front of decision makers. Well, Nancy, if you go into LinkedIn and you search uh, director, you know, the title diversity inclusion and your geographic area, um, maybe you have a list of people that you might talk to and ask some questions and listen. Yeah, I'm kind of work. I'm working through that process with the Baltimore Business uh, Journal, so now I'll switch with. Uh, I'll also involve LinkedIn, but I'm just wondering if anybody had any other creative ideas as to how we approach this. I mean, is it? Are we getting away from our own buying process? Mm -hmm. Is it? Do we? Do you want to? And I use the you as a collective you. You know, do you want to market yourself as the diversity inclusion expert or is the conversation, should it still be grounded in what are you looking to do, change, improve, do differently and answer that question and let's talk about what's standing in the way. Mm -hmm. And I guess, Tammy, I see, keep seeing that sort of question come up over and over again, that if you, the, the literature suggests that people, the the need they have is to figure out how to more concretely implement these own concepts within their organization. They've talked about it for a while, but now they're getting down to how do I measure this? How do I provide results? So it's, you can see there's a need. The question becomes how, how can we position ourselves to help them meet that need? And how do you turn the need into a want? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and who's perceiving the need? It, it, and again, I mean this in the nicest, most respectful way possible, is the organization focusing on it because it's a checkbox? Mm -hmm. Or they really want to, to do something differently? And I, there's, there's companies out there that of all shapes and sizes that fall in both of those categories. Right. But, you know, is the, a lot of what you're reading, is it a checkbox conversation? And we all know that, just like fail-safe leadership, you know, leadership is about results. It's not about competencies. Mm -hmm. but interesting you said the word competency. Tammy, I won't say who this was attached to, but I understand in certain organizations or groups that are moving forward, the term they're using to actually, I think it's incorporated into a hiring concept, is the concept of culture competency, whatever the heck that means. I, I don't know what that means. I don't either, but that's a new buzzword, if you will, that I've seen out there. They're looking for people who have culture competency. I mean, again, this is all, this is more edit, uh, Tammy editorial than you probably wanted, but I think anything that has the word competency behind it is, is kind of a scary thought process. Cause that to me says they're checking boxes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Tom uh, uh, put a chat out there, uh, are the forums going to be recorded? Our intention is yes. Um, we're still working on technology when we put, because open for, the difference between Learning Lab and Open Forum is our, this is a simple difference in our facilitation. Open Forum is a learning format. I'm sorry, Learning Lab is a, a learning format. Open Forum is gonna be a facilitated discussion, which means our intention is to put people into breakout rooms. And uh, we're not sure about the technology as it relates to, does the recording continue when we put you out into breakout rooms? If it doesn't, I don't know how valuable, but we're gonna try it. You know, if, if we tape it on, record it on Wednesday and it's an absolute train wreck, you'll just get the disclaimer that we try. But we're gonna, we're gonna try it, because I know, um, you know, some of your schedules don't always allow participation in everything. But we're, we haven't tested that technology yet, so. Thanks. You're welcome. Tammy, will the breakout rooms have uh, people coming back together and having a reporter from each room? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to do it kind of like we do at Power Summit. You know, pick a leader and you'll come back and report. And that, I think, you know, when you come back and report out. So our, our goal is to t take a bulk of the time and have you work in breakout rooms, come back, share your suggestions, and then we walk away at the end of the 
um, open forum with some actions, whether it's actions that you can take on your own or actions that trusted advisors is going to commit to to continue to support your efforts. That's the goal. We'll see how successful that is on Wednesday. Because <laughs> you guys do create the element of organized chaos sometimes, so. Other thoughts or questions? Again, I don't want to cut it short, but if you want 15 minutes of your life back, I'm losing people, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting my answer. <laughs> Thanks for your participation, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a great week. Thank you, Thank you. Tammy. Bye -bye. Thanks, Tammy. You're welcome. Thank you.